we want to welcome you to the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy. And this is week, Jackie, what week is this? Number nine? No, babe, this is eight. This is eight? Oh, okay, I'm rushing things. I'm rushing things. Week number eight. Well, praise the Lord. Hello, everybody. Lisa Cantrell, God bless you. We thank God for you. Okay. I thank God for Jackie. She reminds me of what lesson we're on because uh, I get ahead of myself. Okay. Praise God. Let's ask Matt Borland from up in Erie, Pennsylvania. Matt just finished shoveling some snow, so he's ready to pray. Matt, would you lead us in prayer? So, well, Heavenly Father, um, please give us the Holy Spirit today to let us understand what Dr. Carter is trying to tell us today and just how this world is today. Just help us get through these days and and suck in as much as we can and help everyone else we can and spread the word as much as we can and just look over this class and look for everyone that has the ailments with Israel and everyone else that has problems. Um, amen. Amen. Praise God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. By the way, it's happy birthday, Israel. Israel is 70 years old. Israel is 70 years old. Um, 1948, the nation of Israel was formed, and Israel became a nation state again. Praise God. God bless you, Jackie Fisher. God bless everyone. We're going to look into lesson eight tonight, and we're studying between the testaments, between the Old Testament and the New Testament. I thank God for each and every one of you. You're doing such a great job in this course, and, and this course is touching hearts, making the Bible come alive. And um, we just give God the praise for you and for your intensity and your diligence and your, your faith in the Lord, your trust in the Lord, and your teachable spirit. I love your teachable spirit. I was talking to Jackie yesterday about the teachable spirit. And it's it's so good to teach people who want to learn and have a teachable spirit. So we just praise God. Just want to make a little note, um, a little advertisement, and then I'll mention it at the end of the class tonight. I'm doing a series of messages on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., if you're able to attend, it will really bless you. We're doing a series on why every believer ought to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why every believer ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're getting great results from people. I mean, there's, there's such an anointing on these teachings. And this week, this coming Sunday, uh, my message is going to be how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you the teaching. We're going to just lead you into getting filled with the Holy Spirit for those who wish uh, to be a part of this. And for those who cannot come alive, this will be taped. So we'll talk about this. I'll mention it again at the end of the service. Um, at the end of the service. Okay, they say my volume is too low. So here we go. Let's boost it up a little bit without getting echo. How's that? How's my volume? Matt, how's my volume? We're good. Okay, fine. Very good. Very good. Very good. So uh, I will send out an email this uh, weekend and invite you, invite you to uh, tell your friends, tell your friends, here's a teaching on how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we can share this with the body of Christ. We can share this with the body. And for those who have already been filled, this will be, uh, um, um, strength. This, this will strengthen the teachings you've already had because so many people uh, in the body of Christ do not, do, are not spirit filled and they're struggling. And um, the Holy Spirit baptism, ladies and gentlemen, helps this Christian walk to be easier. God wants to give you power. The power is available. So uh, join with us and, and receive. And you'll notice what a change 
the Holy Spirit baptism has in your life. And we're, we've been going in the last couple of weeks about uh, questions and answers, Q&A about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit baptism. So by the time we come on on Sunday morning, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready to go zip zoom wherever the Lord leads us. Okay, so let's turn our attention now to this week's lesson. Jackie's in the chat room along with our good buddy Matt Borland and um, they will handle any chat room questions praise God they will minister in the chat room and so we're looking tonight at the the apocrypha and the pseudepigrapha in your textbook we're on page 190 and um, it's a good thing we have it in the textbook because these are two words, two long words. I only know about five or six long words, and two of them are apocrypha and pseudepigrapha. And so let's define these words. The word apocrypha means something hidden or concealed. Apocrypha, it's a Greek word introduced by the Roman Catholics, and it means hidden and concealed. We're going to take a look at the, the apocryphal books, and then we'll look at the pseudepigrapha. The word pseudepigrapha means false books, false books. So we're going to look at two categories of books that are not in our Bibles, but they do occur in uh, Hebrew literature, in, 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 in uh, Hebrew worship services. Also in the Catholic Bibles, also in the Greek Bibles, and other Protestant Bibles, you'll find a set of books that are not taught by uh, most Protestant preachers and not taught, not really acceptable, but they're in these Bibles. And so we're going to take a look at the apocryphal and the pseudepigraphal books tonight. Before we go there, we want to take a look at the lesson the lesson you're responsible for in uh in this week's lesson and that's found on page Oh, that's back there on page 352. On page 52, you're to answer the following questions for this week's lesson. Question number one, students should write from memory Malachi 4, 4 to 5. Write from memory Malachi 4, 4 to 5, and then journal what the Lord says to you about these verses. Journaling means you ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want to speak to me about these verses? What do you have want to speak to me about these verses? Malachi 4 four to five. Uh, let's listen as Sharon Hudson, our celebrity, will come on and sing these verses to us. Sharon, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Praise God. Praise God. Praise. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. We, we appreciate you very much and your love for us and for the word of God and for your love for Jesus and your willingness to take time and seek the Holy Spirit and, and uh, sing these, these verses to us and teach us how to learn scripture by singing. Praise God. And we want to encourage you in what you're doing. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children 
and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. And if you want a copy of this uh, song, send Sharon an email. I'm sure she'll be glad to send it to you. S Hudson 0123 at yahoo.com. Is that correct, Sharon? Uh, which one did you say? I have two. <laughs> S Hudson 0123 at yahoo.com. Yes. Fine. Okay. That's correct. Okay. It says zero. It's zero one two three. Zero one two three. Okay. Very at good. At gmail dot com. At okay. Thank you. S Hudson zero one two three at gmail dot com. Praise God. Thank you, Sharon. The second uh, question in your homework assignment: During the Maccabean period. During the Maccabean period, we're looking at 186 BC, when the Jews were dominated by the Syrians, who was Judas Maccabeus, and why were he and his family famous in Jewish history? You'll get the answer to that in uh, the section on Lesson 8. Number three, who were the scribes? How did they develop? What was their importance during the inter- testamental period and during the time of Christ. Number four, identify the Pharisees and the Sadducees. How did they differ? How were they alike? Who are the Pharisees and Sadducees today? Number five, what was the Sanhedrin Council and how did it develop? By the time of Christ, the Sanhedrin Council was very powerful. Why was it necessary for this group to come into existence? Number six, describe the impact that the Romans had on the Jewish nation during the intertestamental period. And when we uh, speak of the intertestamental period, we're looking at approximately 400, uh, B 400 BC until um, pretty close to three, well, the scholars use the 3 AD uh, or 3 BC, actually um, 400 to 3 BC. They have um, rediscovered the uh, year in which Christ was born, and they think it was 3 BC rather than zero, uh, uh, the year zero. So we're looking at a 400-year period, 400 to roughly 3 BC. Number seven, why is the period? between the books of Malachi and Matthew called the period of the Dark Ages in biblical history. And all these answers to these questions are found starting on page 190 of your textbook. Praise God. And so, uh, by the way, if you're having any difficulty with any questions, please give me a call, or give Jackie a call, uh, send us an email. We'll be glad to help you. But I want, I want to commend you on the work you're doing and, and what, what you're gaining. Uh, before we go any further, uh, by next week, we will have a, an outline of when, of, of when to enroll for next semester. We're getting close to the end of this semester with only four more classes and four more weeks. And then um, we want to make sure that you're, you can enroll in uh, classes for the next semester. We're offering two additional classes in addition to what uh, you, you've, you've taken and what you're taking now. Um, we have one easy course coming up next semester and one that's going to be rather challenging, but I'll tell you, this course on prophecy, Introduction to the Prophetic, it is a life-changing course. I'm finishing this course um, at the current time. Every Bible student needs to know um, Matt, we're, I'll answer your question. Can we take both? I'll answer your question next week, but the answer is yes. Okay, we'll talk about that on next week. You can take them. One is so easy. It's more reading than anything else. It's more reading than anything else. And the challenging course will be the course on the prophetic. I'll tell you, these courses are awesome. One is Gifted to Succeed, where you... Uh, discover and evaluate your um, spiritual gifts 
and then uh, the course on the prophetic. We'll talk about this next week, um, and uh, by that time, Heidi will have the, the website up to date. Every Bible student needs to know that there's a gap of over 400 years between the writings of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Why is there such a gap? Scholarship shows that there were other writings during this period of time. And it's these other writings that we're going to talk about tonight. They're called the Apocrypha and the Pseudepigrapha. The Apocrypha and the Pseudepigrapha. When you break them down into their Greek roots, um, um, the, the, the suffix and the, the prefix and the suffix, it's easy to look at Pseudepigrapha, Pseuda, meaning false. Grapha, writings, false writings, and uh, apocrypha, hidden things. The apocrypha is the name given to a list of 16 to 20 or more books that the councils of bishops or church fathers rejected as being scripture based, scriptural based on their doubtful authorship and their contents. So these books written during the Old Testament period were rejected by the uh, Jewish rabbis in their councils and rejected by the uh, New Testament bishops in the uh, New Testament era. And so uh, both groups believe that they were not divinely inspired and Holy Spirit led. And I'm going to share uh, some expert excerpts from the Apocrypha our pseudepigrapha tonight and and just you just give you a little taste of what's involved in these books the main thing is number one the the bishops as well as the rabbis did not agree that these books were divinely inspired and one of the major uh rabbis one of the major uh scribes who led this whole movement in the Old Testament period was Ezra. Ezra is a very, very important person in uh, Bible history and in Jewish history. When the captives came back from Babylon and uh, books were discovered and scrolls were discovered, it was Ezra who had to sort through the writings and compile them and along with the other rabbis and, and establish a canon, C-A-N-O-N, a canon, meaning a group of books that uh, they believe that the Holy Spirit wanted uh, the people to, to learn from. And that is how we uh, arrived at the Old Testament. And uh, the same thing had to be done in the second century, in the first and second century A.D. And then again in the fourth century. They had to review all the writings because they had so many writings and the writings were attributed to, attributed to biblical characters. And so after the resurrection of Christ, all kinds of writings came up and the New Testament uh, fathers, the church fathers, Eusebius, Irenaeus, and many others had to sort through and make sure that what the people were getting was of the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, praise God. Matt, I'll take your question in a moment, okay? Um, so they had to make sure that what they were getting was of the Holy Spirit. So we had councils in the Old Testament. We cannot identify the exact council uh, of rabbis, although in the New Testament era, we can identify the Council of Nicaea, 325 A.D., the Council of Nicaea that sealed the books that made up the New Testament and sealed the 66 books of the Bible. Many of these other books, uh, as, as spiritual as many of them may sound, as spiritual as many of them may sound, they were not accepted as being uh, divinely inspired. Okay, and Matt has a question. Matt, what is your question? Um, I was just wondering about the book of Enoch. I mean, I, I know this falls in the category of being what you're talking about, but um, I feel like it, it talks a lot about what we should know about, like the giants and 
and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, I feel like the powers that Ram run this world kind of didn't want this knowledge out there because it didn't go along with their, you know, so-called history. Very good. Very good question, Matt. Matt asked about the book of Enoch, and he uh, also alludes to the giants. And um, I wrote a book uh, called The, the uh, Giants Are Back. It's about 400 pages about the how giants came on the earth and what Satan's plan is to destroy the seed of a woman and to destroy Jesus Christ. And even after Christ was resurrected, uh, Satan uh, still has giants. They are running the earth today. They're not those high, big statured people, but he has giants uh, that are designed. People, uh, giants are designed to destroy uh, Christianity, to, to wipe out Christians. And so, um, in, at the time of Enoch, even going back into the Old Testament times, there were giants on the earth. We get this from Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. There were giants on the earth. Giants were actually uh, uh, fallen angels, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture described them as fallen angels. And I describe this in my book, The Giants Are Back. Fallen angels who had sex with women. The Bible says they found women uh, the, the daughters of man to be attractive and they married Satan manipulated that these giants married women and the women gave birth to a whole race of giants and this was Satan's scheme ladies and gentlemen Satan wanted to get into the Canaan land he heard about Genesis 315 and he heard about the seed that was going to come and destroy him and Satan's plan was to 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 populate the world with a race of giants and he pl he planted them in the Canaan land so that uh, God's children could not come in there and and Joshua and uh, the the uh, the warriors had to fight a race of giants they had to destroy a race of giants that had been planted in that land to prevent God's people from uh, taking over that land so that's a part of an ant the answer to the question, Matt. Um, when you read the book of Enoch and you read others, um, I would suggest that you read them for history, Matt, for history, because there's a lot of history. In fact, in fact, in the book of Jude, uh, one of the verses in the book of Jude is um, taken. Jude takes uh, from one of the books, First Edra, Esdras, I think it was. And he quotes that Paul quoted one of the uh, a portion of one of the apocryphal books. So these books are they they were not considered Holy Spirit anointed, uh, but they have been used throughout history. Uh, and we see this with the study of the book of Enoch, and we see others that we got we draw a lot of our history from these books by the way let me just take a break now because i pulled out from my shelf a bible that my mother gave me um and it was written it was published by the holman company this is the holman bible published in 1873 has a padlock you can see this padlock on the front it has a padlock on it and it's the holman bible and it has the apocryphal books in it it has the apocryphal books this bible's over 140 some years old and it um the apocrypha opens up with first esdras first esdras and we i'll give you a list of the apocryphal books and the pseudepigraphal books this they're all already listed in your textbook but let's just no, listen. yes can I interject real quick? Yes. Um, aren't you? I mean, like the book Enoch. I mean, I I checked it against scripture and, and you know what's in the Bible. I mean, it goes all along with it. So I mean, who are these people that decide that it's not Holy Spirit divine to be into the Bible? The people or people like Ezra, scribes, uh, rabbis, uh, the Old Testament patriarch, not the patriarchs, but the the fathers, the, the, the leaders, um, when Israel came out of captivity, they had spiritual leaders. The, the most notable was Ezra. So it was Ezra 
and 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 Ezra had a school and he, he had rabbis who whom he had trained and they had to make a decision. That's where you get your Old Testament uh, canon uh, made up based on okay. on how they and they didn't make just arbitrary decisions, Matthew. They mm. sought the Lord. They prayed. And and okay. and and we know from study of history that Ezra led uh help usher in the greatest revival of all times in the Old Testament time when the people came back from Babylon Ezra led that revival when they discovered these scrolls and these books and Ezra read from the the Pentateuch okay he had other other scrolls available and then they mm. with the work he did he had a school had a training school he taught the rabbis and he taught them and they looked over these books they looked over Enoch. They looked over Esdras. They looked over uh, other books, and they had to come with to some conclusion as to. And they sought the here, the main the key is Matthew. They sought the Lord. Okay. okay? They saw. What about the New Testament? The New Testament. Is it, uh, yeah. In your New Testament, you have a list of people. Uh, we have Eusebius, the father of church history. We have Irenaeus. We have uh, uh, a whole list. I, I can get you that list later on. A whole list of people uh, who worked and did the same thing that Ezra did with the rabbis of the Old Testament. These are, are New Testament leaders, uh, uh, pastors, apostles, and leaders who came together. And the, the, the key time for them, we note, is the year 325 A.D. In the year 325 A.D. at a place called Nicaea. Uh, and I see it was one in somewhere in Greece. They they met and they uh, came together and they and they selected by way of praying. Matthew, they didn't just choose books. Yeah. They prayed. Uh -huh. They sought the Lord uh, for what the Lord wanted to include in the canon. This is a very how we got our Bible is a fascinating story. And a, yes. a lot of the books, when you read these books, when you read first and second Maccabees, when you read first and second Maccabees, you get a, a complete history of what happened after Antiochus Epiphanes, the Syrian leader, came and destroyed the temple and, and sacrificed a pig on the altar of the temple of God. So <laughs> that whole revolution, the Maccabean revolution, what happened uh, in the year 168 around that time until the Romans took over, you get a, a good history of how the Maccabean family rose up and um, um, your whole thing about um, the Feast of Lights, I think that's Hanukkah, the whole Feast of Lights uh, came into being because of the work of this family in leading a revolution to destroy the enemies of Jerusalem. And then uh, the Romans took over. So when you look at these books, you can get a great, good history. However, I do not suggest that you preach from them. OK, mm -hmm. class, I do not suggest that you preach from it. now. I've got a couple of friends. I'm not going to call any names. They're not in this school. They're not in our school, but I've trained them in a previous school. Dr. Gene Bratton knows some of them and 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 they go and they preach from these apocryphal books. You know why? Because they have been diluted. Do not let the Masonic order and the secret societies cause you to think, Matthew, that they have something that you don't have. They have more knowledge than you. And so we find members of the Order of the Eastern Star, Eastern Star and members of the Masonic Lodge and the secret societies. They and 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 these secret societies, Matthew, there's where this is where you get your your presidents and your congressmen and your leaders of the nation. They're members oh, of yeah, these secret I, societies. I We're looking at the Illuminati and all this sort of thing. Don't let them make you think that you're missing out on something because you're not mm -hmm. following their studies. They're all engrossed in these books. They're all engrossed in the Coptic and the Because they can change it to whatever they want because it's not in the Bible, so they, they can switch it and make yes. it whatever they want it to yes. be to go with their yes. agenda. Yes, and 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 they have they have destroyed a lot of people's minds, and they've caused much confusion because because 
weak-minded Christians who don't study the word of God for themselves can be deluded. And God said in his word, he said, I will send them strong delusion because they believe the lie. And so we do not want you to believe in the lie. That is why the scripture says, and Paul, re, Paul uh, mentions and reiterates, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We believe that the scripture from Genesis to Revelation, ladies and gentlemen, we believe, Christians believe that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, that God breathed upon these writers. Now, God may have breathed upon Judas Maccabeus. He might have breathed on the writer of Estrus. But the Holy Spirit did not reveal that to the bishops who um, put together the 27 books of the New Testament or the rabbis who had to choose of all the writings 39 books and make up what they call the Old Testament. Okay, so I hope I've made this clear. Uh, does anybody, Matt, did I make that clear enough? Loud and clear. Okay, so the caution is, ladies and gentlemen, the caution is read these books. And many of you have read these books or will read these books, but don't get carried away. Don't let the tide take you out there. Don't let that undercurrent take you out there because because uh we've got friends friends of this ministry and the paul begley ministry who are out there and some are so out there now that they're embarrassed because they've been preaching from the apocryphal books they've been preaching from the pseudepigraphal books and they're out there and they're grieving the holy spirit and I pray that they will return. I could call a couple names tonight, but I'm not going to call any names. I pray for them. But and people, I, I, do not preach. I suggest that you do not preach from First Esdras or Second Esdras or Judith or Tobit or Bell and the Dragon or any of these other books. Do not use this as your text, even though. Well, I, I, even I've seen the corruption in Thomas. I, I read it the other day. I read Thomas, the book of Thomas, and yes. it was kind of out there. I, I was just like, man, that's, it's, you know, some of that stuff was right and some of the stuff was just, was not right, you know? <laughs> when, Matt, Matt, when you read it, you read it with a caution. You read it with the Holy yeah. Spirit guiding you because because when people accept this, if you accept the portion of it, you're accepting the half truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That is why he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We believe that what we have between, between Genesis and Revelation came out of the mouth of God and has been breathed by the Holy Spirit. But what did the Roman Catholics do? They stuck in about 20 different books in their Bible in between Genesis and Revelation. They stuck this in there. And the Greek Bible did the same thing, and other Protestant groups have done the same thing. But I, I, I urge you to walk with caution. When you run into uh, the apocryphal books, look at them as what their names mean. Apro apocryphal means hidden, hidden, concealed. But don't let anybody fool you to think that they know more about the Bible than you do because they have access to the hidden books. Some of my friends who are in the Masonic Lodge, I am not a Mason. I refuse to join a lodge. But but I have friends and uh, you know we gotta love people no matter who they are. But they think they have they know more. They think they know more. And in their rituals, uh they, they try to impress you that they know more. And people, you know, people people are basically deceived by by mysterious stuff. And, and if you tell them, I got something secret, oh, I got this is why uh, Satan got into Eve's ear. Uh, 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 you want, psst, hey, 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 sister, you want to know, you want to know something secret? I've got something for you. Uh, didn't God say don't? Well, I got something hidden, something secret. He's hidden something for you. And people fall for this. So do not be deceived, ladies and gentlemen. 
That is why you must read this Bible with caution. Even when you take this course, understanding the Bible or any other course, you've got to walk through it with caution. You've got to let the Holy Spirit lead you. And, uh, um, and, we, and we, we have responsibility not only to study, but when we teach others, we've got to teach them the truth. So if you're a student, a scholar of of the apocryphal or pseudepigraphal books, ladies and gentlemen, please designate to your students or those you're sharing with where you got this information and give them a little bit of background about that book so that people do not accept everything coming down the pike as gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, everything coming down the pike is not gospel. Everything being preached in the pulpit is not gospel. Okay, so uh, let me see. Let me just. Pastor Carter. Yes. I it's it's Jean Bratton. I do have something to add. Uh, what you just said to Matt. Matt, um, it's also called pseudepigrapha or apocryphal writings because there was a lot of forgery going on. For instance, the Gospel of Judas. Judas could not have written a gospel because he committed suicide. Yeah. Um, they have the Gospel of Peter, the Second Epistle of Peter. Um, they were forged. Lots of people were named Peter. We still have people named Peter today, but it was not Peter, the disciple of Christ. That's why some of those books are listed um, as the apocryphal writings. There was a lot of forgery going on. I just wanted to add that, Pastor Carter. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Jean Bratton, pastor of Living, Living Waters Fellowship in Wilmington, Delaware. She's a Bible scholar. and uh, she's reminding us that the, the pseudepigrapha, the false books, false books, what they did, they took, they named uh, these books, they named the books and attributed them to biblical characters. And as Dr. Jean shared with us about uh, Judas, Judas could not have written a book, he committed suicide. But so what they do, they, they attributed uh, certain books to uh, certain people. And uh, the people didn't write the book, so we don't know who the authors are, but some of it sounds scriptural. Um, in 2 Maccabees chapter 13, 1, in the 149th year, it was told Judas that Antiochus Eupator was coming with a great power into Judea. And with him, Lysias, his protector and ruler of his affairs, having either of them a Grecian power of footmen. So Judas Maccabeus was told that uh, Antiochus Epiphanes was coming to invade Jerusalem, which he did. This is history. He did. But this is not a divinely inspired book. Let's take a look at um, the book of Ecclesiasticus. Not Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 13. He that toucheth pitch shall be defiled therewith and he that hath fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him so he that has fellowship with a proud man shall be like a someone who sticks her hand in tar okay burden not thyself above thy power while thou livest and have no fellowship with one that is mightier and richer than thyself for how agree the kettle and the earthen pot together for if the one be smitten against the other, it shall be broken. The rich man hath done wrong, and yet he threateneth withal. The poor is wrong, and he must entreat also. So this sounds scriptural, ladies and gentlemen. It sounds scriptural. Let me read something from the wisdom of Solomon. O God of my fathers, the Lord of mercy, who hast made all things with thy word, and ordained man through thy wisdom, that he should have dominion over the creature's which thou hast made, and order the world order the world according to equity and righteousness, and execute judgment with an upright heart. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne, and reject me not from among thy children. So this is Solomon asking for wisdom in the book entitled The Wisdom of Solomon, which has not was not approved of as a canonized book. In the Old Testament. In, in the next chapter, Solomon writes, She preserved, meaning she, meaning wisdom, she preserved the first formed father of the world that was 
created alone and brought him out of his fall. What's, what, what, what Solomon is saying here is wisdom preserved Adam after he fell and brought him out of his fall. In other words, in other words Adam is in heaven right now because wisdom preserved him and delivered him from his fall and gave him power to rule all things. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger, he perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. So uh, this is about, um, it sounds scriptural. It sounds scriptural, but ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to, to use caution. Now, you can come to my house and borrow this book if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to ship it to you. It costs too much. But uh, you can get, you can download, you can download the apocryphal books on your computer if you want to or Google uh, and find them. But um, we're just looking at books, the apocryphal books, Tobit, Judith, Additions to Esther, First Maccabees, Second Maccabees, Wisdom, Sirach, Baruch, Letter of Jeremiah. Now, Baruch was Jeremiah's secretary, so the apocryphal books have a book called Baruch. Addition to Daniel, Susanna, the Song of the Three Children, Bell and the Dragon, First Esdras, Second Esdras, Prayer of Manasseh, Book of Jubilees, Third Maccabees, Fourth Maccabees, Psalm 151. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the apocryphal books, there's a Psalm 151. There are Psalms 152 to 155. Our Bible ends with Psalm 150. So um, if you're not careful, people will have you believe in that you're missing out on something. And that's one of Satan's greatest temptations against mankind. He wants you to think you're missing something. You're missing something. You're happily married. You got a nice wife and all this. And then here comes this uh, little Susie coming wiggling in your face. And Satan wants you to think you're missing out on something. She got something that you ain't getting at home. You know, and that's how people get messed up. Temptation. That's how people get messed up. Who's um, anybody wanted to say something? Okay, the pseudepigrapha, it's a whole different genre than uh, the apocryphal books. The pseudepigrapha were books that were written and attributed to biblical characters. And um, the authorship, these books were rejected because there was a discrepancy about the authorship. As Dr. Gene Bratton shared with us, uh, uh, the book of Judas can't be a book of Judas. Judas hanged himself. Judas didn't have time to write a book before he hung himself. Uh, Pseudepigrapha, 3rd and 4th Maccabees, The Assumption of Moses, um, The Book of Enoch 1, Book of Enoch 2, Book of Jubilees, Greek Apocalypse of Baruch, Letter of Aristeus, Life of Adam and Eve. The Life of Adam and Eve, ladies and gentlemen, it's in a book. Did you know there's a book? called The Life of Adam and Eve, Martyrdom and Ascension of Isaiah, um, Psalms of Solomon, not songs, Psalms of Solomon, Sibylline Oracles, Syriac, Syriac Apocalypse of Baruch, Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs, the Gospel of Peter, the Second Epistle of Peter, now, we have 1 Peter and we have 2 Peter, but the second epistle of Peter, yes, Sharon Hudson, counterfeit. And Satan specializes in counterfeit. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan will take what exists from God and he will duplicate it. He's like the Chinese. Man, he'll clone anything you invent and, and, and make it look like the real thing. Uh, the gospel of Barnabas, the gospel of Judas. And so be alert, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the apocryphal books and the pseudepigrapha, please be alert. Now, I have, I, I'm, I'm thinking of a certain uh, lady who studied under me last year and is going out on the deep end. And she's 
uh, her sermons come from the apoc the apocryphal books and the and the pseudepigraphal books. And I called her. I I mentioned it to her in an email and called her. And uh, you know she doesn't want to talk to me because once you get out there on a limb and 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 see us this proud spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, please, no matter where God leads you, go humbly, stay humble. And if you get out there, if you get out there and you're out there on a limb, the easiest thing to do is repent, repent, repent. If you get out there, wherever you are, and God's going to lead a lot of you into some wonderful areas, but don't give in to pride. Do not forsake the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not forsake the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. And ladies and gentlemen, this spirit of pride, this spirit of pride is ruining the church, ruining the church. Satan knows what to do. He knows what bell to ring, what button to push. But let us walk humbly before the Lord and avoid, flee, flee idolatry. And uh, some of these books, people put them up, set them up. And that's idolatry. Flee idolatry. Let us be true to the Lord God. And here again, most of you have taken this course, communion with God. And you know by now what I'm going to say. If in doubt, ask the Lord. If you're ever in doubt, ask the Lord. If somebody's preaching something and you're in doubt, ask the Lord. If anybody's teaching anything, and that includes me, if in doubt, you ask the Lord. You trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And when you quiet yourself down and you when you look for spontaneity, you look for vision. You ask the Lord, God, give me clarity. God will do this and 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 wait on the Lord. Learn how to wait on the Lord. And here's another thing. God has given us a built in check system. Test the spirits by the spirit test the spirit by the spirit test the spirit if someone's coming and they've got a new new uh a new teaching and and it's it's just sweeping people off their feet it's a new teaching they haven't heard it before i'm going to test that by the holy spirit i want to find out if it's of god and i suggest um with with the, the popularity of the pseudepigrapha and the apocryphal books in many areas and and many of us have friends who are Masonics and, and these secret societies. Ladies and gentlemen, I I I would tell my I, t I do tell my Masonic friends, hey, those are false books. You need to study the Bible. And uh, then they cut you off. And if you lose them as a friend, well, friend, well, what the heck? What the heck? I'd rather lose my friends having taught them the word of God and having stood on the word of God. The scripture says, having done all, stand. And put on put on the full armor of God. Okay, so Christians need to be made aware of the fact that there are no hidden or secret books that God kept out of the Bible and only revealed to a certain person or a select group of people. God did not give a special revelation to Joseph Smith and the founders of the Mormon Church. Neither did God give a special revelation to the so-called prophet Muhammad. God did not reveal his truth to a prophet named Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'is, or to anyone else who proposed that they received a deeper and final revelation other than what God breathed into the writers of the Holy Scriptures. As Christians, we preach the truth of the gospel and we cast down all vain imaginations, including false teachings, no matter how popular they are and no matter how. Who claims or claim to have received a special revelation from God? This author, meaning Leroy Carter, very strongly advises students of the gospel to preach and teach the gospel and also be aware of the fact that the enemy of our souls often tries to inject his own books, movies, tapes, CDs, text messages, tweets, as well as other forms of communication to throw people off the street and narrow check. I don't buy everybody's book, ladies and gentlemen. I don't read everybody's book. I don't want everybody's CD. If you're not preaching the gospel, I don't want it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? So be alert. 
as you go forth proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be like Joshua. Joshua 1, 7 and 8 says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever so ever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. It's all right to read to read the apocryphal and pseudepigraphal books, and it's all right to get a taste of history, but then know who the writers were. Know whether or not this is truth. And how do you find out truth? Jesus said, I will send you the, the comforter, the spirit of truth. He's called the spirit of truth. That's why we need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And that's why on Sunday morning, we're going to be talking about how to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And, and uh, we will record this session for those who cannot come on alive. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day because Satan is so deceptive and even your closest friend can deceive you if you're not careful. That is why uh, even, even with husband and wife, you must be led by the Holy Spirit. I know I love you, honey. I know this and that, but I don't think that's of God. And so you need to pray. We need to pray. We need to walk with the Lord. We need to be in obedience. And ladies and gentlemen, the quickest way to get thrown off, the quickest way, Satan's always looking for an opening. If you sin and don't confess that sin, he's got an opening. The door is opening. So the scripture teaches us when we sin, be quick to repent. Be quick to repent. We get this from the book of Jude. Jude, uh, Satan rushes up to the throne of God whenever a Christian uh, believer sins and he accuses the brethren. But when we confess our sin right away, Jesus stands up on the throne of God, on the right hand of the throne of God and says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And the devil's got to take his, 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 his hind parts and get out of the presence of God. And so I'm saying this, walk in the spirit. And, and do not fulfill the lust of the flesh, even the lust of reading stuff that you're not supposed to read. That's why so many preachers have fallen. They've lusted. They've started reading pornography and downloading pornography. Uh, husbands and wives, marriages have been broken up because people entertain demons. Ladies and gentlemen, we must stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And we've got to love one another and pray for one another okay um there's only about a minute or so left so read starting on pages 193 to the end of this chapter 197 about the persian period the greek period the syrian period the period of independence the roman period the old testament canon that's explained in this textbook okay the introduction of synagogues synagogues started while Israel was captive in Babylon as places for meeting and training schools. I'll read about the dispersion. Read about the Pharisees, the Pharisees, and learn the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, somewhere in, in my textbook, I mentioned that the Pharisees, um, the Pharisees did not believe in the resurrection while the Sadducees did. Those two groups, they, they hung together because they were political allies, but they were diametrically, diametrically opposed to one another. But for the sake of destroying Christ and destroying Christians, they uh, uh, accommodated one another. They formed a political alliance. Um, just like we see in Washington, D.C. You know, folks who hate one another can come together for certain things so they can keep certain things down or things from happening. So the Pharisees hated, hated Paul because he taught about the resurrection. Everywhere he went, the Pharisees followed him and tried to undermine his preaching. They hated the fact that he talked about the resurrection 
of Jesus Christ. The Sadducees, they accepted uh, the resurrection of the dead. They believed that the dead would rise again. But these two got together, and um, when you have political allies coming together like that, people who can't stand one another, they will agree to, to agree on things they don't agree on. I know that sounds goofy, but they will agree to agree on things they don't agree on for the sake of staying in power. So look at the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then there's a little article on page 196 on the Sanhedrin Council and an article on the scribes. The scribes had power. They're the ones who interpret the, interpreted the scripture. They didn't know scripture, but they interpreted scripture. So they were like the lawyers of their day. Um, and, and, and Jesus oftentimes nailed the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees because everybody thought they were spiritual powerhouses. And we've got scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees in this world today, in this nation today, even in the church. Folks who don't know uh, uh, anything about the scriptures, but people have been led to believe that they're so powerful and they're so spiritual. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy and those who study with the Back to Basics ministry Test the spirit by the spirit. Don't disregard your Bible. Study the word. Fast and pray. Pray, pray, pray. The scripture says men and women ought always to pray. Don't just accept everything you hear. Pray, pray. And ladies and gentlemen, join me if you can Sunday morning. Join me if you can. And for the next several Sundays, we're going to be talking about the Holy Ghost baptism, the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, we're going to be talking about speaking in tongues. We're going to talk about the other gifts of the Spirit. We're going to put everything in place and in decent order. And, and God wants his people walking with power. God wants you walking with power. God wants you so powerful that when you walk down the street, pit bulls move to the other side of the block. When you're walking down the street, uh, uh, robbers uh, 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 just sit down and put their hands in their pocket and let you go by. Uh, when you walk down the street, a man who's beating his wife uh, repents and, 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 and asks her forgiveness because there's something on the inside of you. Come on, somebody. Something on the inside of you that brings people under conviction. And it's not you. It's not me. But it's the spirit of the living God. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the spirit of the living God. God wants to fill you with his presence, with his power, with his love. And then when you talk to people, talk to them with love in your heart. Don't beat them up. People know they're no good. Most people know they're no good. You can't count on them for anything. Uh, they're not dependable. But, but talk to them with love. Tell them that God has a better way. And not only talk to them, show them. Show them. They will know we are Christians by our love. And so God has made it possible that we can all walk in love. And he sent the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the picture. Look at the picture, ladies and gentlemen. God has sent the Holy Spirit. And every believer has the Holy Spirit on the inside. But the scripture says, be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to bubble up. He wants to naba. He wants to rise up in every believer. But every people are scared of the Holy Spirit because some idiots in the church uh, began denouncing tongues and, and, and ignorantly looking at the gifts of the Spirit without reading the Word of God. And so the whole church has been corrupted by ignorance. But we can break through this ignorance. Come on, somebody. We can break through this ignorance by studying the Word of God, seeking the Lord for ourselves, and receive. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is just waiting to fill us, waiting to fill us, to show us a better way to live this life, an easier way. We can get our family and relatives set free. He's waiting to fill us, and we've got to seek him and receive him and ask for him. You don't have to, uh, 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 you can't buy this. You, you, don't, you don't have to struggle for this. God wants to give the church a gift. And it's just like the UPS truck riding up to your house. All you got to do is sign for it, 
Just sign for it. Okay. Just sign for it. Well, bless God. Bless God. I pray that God will bless you. Lord God, bless this congregation. Bless bless our, our students. Lord God, you love them and I love them. And you've got great plans for all of us. And Lord, forgive us of our sins. Help us to open our hearts to receive all that you have for us. Help us to be alert, God, uh, against the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the wiles of the devil, uh, the false prophets, the false teachings, the false books. Help us to be alert. Help us to walk so closely with you, Lord God, that you'll lead us into all truth by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, fill us again and again and again every day with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Sharon asked a question. Sharon, see you trying to get me in trouble. Lord, I thank you for answering our prayer. Sharon Hudson is trying to get me in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. And I she, do. <laughs> she asked this question. Are Pharisees and Sadducees Republicans and Democrats or Democrats? Sharon trying to get me to commit to politics on this teaching, ladies and gentlemen. But Sharon, I ain't biting on this bait. I ain't going to bite this bait. <laughs> but what, I, what I can say is, Sharon, Sharon, we've got Pharisees and Sadducees in both parties. Okay? Correct. Even among the independents. Sharon, we got Pharisees and, and Sadducees on the deacon board, on the trustee board, on the steward board. Sharon, we've got Pharisees and Sadducees preaching the gospel. That is why you have got to test the spirit by the spirit, okay? Jesus, Amen. Jesus was none of the above, okay? We want to be... Uh, Jesus here on earth. He's left us here as his body. We're the body of Christ. We're not to be politically correct. Uh, we're, we're not to be overbalanced politically. We're to walk in the spirit and do the word of God. That is why studying the scriptures so, is so important. And being open, Sharon, to the Holy Spirit. Because uh, God will pull your coat if you're getting too close to the Sadducees. You get to getting too close to the Pharisees, or you're starting to starting to think like the Pharisees, or think uh, like the Republicans or the Democrats. I ain't naming them, Sharon, but God, the Holy Ghost will say, "Hey, Sharon, Sharon, uh, uh, let's take a walk. Let's take a walk." And and those walks with God are so sweet, aren't they, Sharon? Yes, they are. Let's take a walk. Let me let me give you a song, Sharon. Let me give you a song. The Holy Spirit may say, "Let me give you a song." I want you to sing this song and teach people how to avoid the Pharisees and the Sadducees and walk with Jesus. Oh, come on. Oh, man, I've had a good time teaching tonight. I just love this. I just love this. And I love you all. Um, anybody have any questions, any comments? I see Zizla um, joined us. And Zizla, we're praying for... Uh, um, we're praying for our friend Israel. We're believing God's going to work things out for him. Okay. Um, uh, yes, thank you so much. And uh, and yes, thank you. And blessings to you and, and Miss Jackie. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else want to share before we uh, close out tonight? Um, can I add my friend Tammy to the list of prayers? Um, she found out that she had a a little mass on her pancreas. And uh, the blood work came out good, but she went to go have some more blood work and a full body scan. And so I'm trying to minister to her and keep her focus on God and praising God because this yes. is what he wants us to do. Yes. Is this correct? Yes, you stand <laughs> just, in the gap with her and keep that's her right. focus that's, on the Lord. Uh, that's the hardest thing to do when you're not feeling well. Yes. And this is why we need the body of Christ to help each other during yes. this time yes we you're not feeling well so one another so you stand and we're standing with you in prayer uh her name is tammy yes tammy father god in the name of jesus we stand with tammy in her time of need and we're believing you god that you're going to meet every need she has and give her healing that you're going to remove just remove any evidence of any mass anything that's not I suppose to be 
on her body or in her body. We we and we believe you're going to use Sharon to just uh, help her help Tam to keep her eyes on Jesus and 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 be a blessing. And Lord, help us to encourage one another. We're the body of Christ. Help us to love one another. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. And we thank you. We lift off, continue lifting up Israel, that you're working things out. And Lord, we lift up uh, Heidi Bagley and uh, her mother, that you'll bless Heidi's mother and heal her. And so many others are are sick and afflicted. Father, we trust you. We trust. We walk by faith and not by sight. Whatever the doctor's reports are, those are not the final reports. We know you as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. The Lord, our healer, we uh, pray for Shamir and James up in Chester, Pennsylvania, that you'll heal them, Lord, in their time of bereavement. We bless you, Lord. We thank you and we honor you. Thank you for each and every one. Bless them in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. Let's bring Matt Borland on again. Hey, Matthew. I think he had a sign off that said his computer was dying. OK, OK, OK. We thank God for Matt. Matt keeps us in stitches. I mean, they they get they get a lot of snow up there in Erie, Pennsylvania. Now I'm from Pennsylvania, but not up in that corner of the state. Uh, and they'll probably be getting snow up into into May. They get snow in May and June sometime. So we thank God for Matt. We hope we answered his questions. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Uh, we I hope I answered your questions tonight. I want to encourage you to continue doing what you're doing. You're about a great work. Don't get weary in well-doing. And take a little bit of time out. I know Jackie's going to put an amen in the chat window. Take a little time for your family, okay? Take a little time for your family. Ain't that right, Jackie? Amen, amen. <laughs> with, with, with that, we ask you to close out, Jackie. We close out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I promised Jackie I'll wash her car on Thursday. Sharon Hudson, I promised her I was going to wash her car on Thursday. Amen. CK, I came home today. She's out in the driveway washing her car. So I said, Jackie Fisher, I said, look at her. I done promised her, but she got a little bit impatient. So I can see it now. She's going to have her car out there tomorrow for another wash. <laughs> but they that wait upon the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but now you didn't tell the rest of the story. I won't be able to wash it tomorrow. Yes, yes, yo, I forgot the rest of the story. Okay. <laughs> well, now the car will be there tomorrow. She's got something to do. Yes, yeah, she's got something to do. God bless you all. Happy birthday, Zisla. Happy birthday. Any? Did we miss anybody? Hi, thank you. Somebody had birthday last Monday. Who was it? Sisla, happy birthday to you. Uh, thank you so much. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. May God give you many, many, many more. Well, that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We love you. Thank God.